I got new shoes. <laughs> I needed new work shoes, and I was there, and I was like, man, my other shoes are kind of shitty. I, I should probably buy some new ones. I did that, and I got me some socks. <laughs> Dude, it has been a while since I've gotten me some decent uh, uh, soft socks. Uh, I, I know the feeling. <laughs> so these are nice and thin and new shoes, and I didn't have to spend $100 altogether. That's a great intro for our video, Sean. <laughs> hey, everybody. Not like you can edit that out. What's up? I think I might just leave it in for the fun of it. Just talking about my shoes and socks experience? I yeah. like how my feet feel in these. <laughs> well, it's a bad movie night again, Sean. That it is. And because of a recent release, uh, there are actually two this month. And this is the first one. In that we went and saw the Disaster Artist, and You're Derek it turned, Bond. and it turned out that shock of shocks, someone had never seen The Room, what is largely <laughs> lauded as the best bad movie ever, which I won't one hundred percent agree with, but I will understand people who say that. <laughs> now, I think just for starters, who say that have never seen Neil Breen movies. It's entirely possible, actually. <laughs> it's entirely possible. Now, I will start off this saying, I love The Room. It's it's almost the quintessential bad movie. It, it's one of those bad movies I sit there and go, what were they thinking? It's, it's, it's an auteur movie that doesn't, Deserve to be an auteur movie because Tommy Wiseau was the writer, the director, <laughs> the executive producer, editor, <laughs> and it, it was just the quintessential amount of one man's vision rammed into everybody else <laughs> and threw into its own cultural uh, zeitgeist nearly. And it has taken a long time to get there. But it's one of those once you once it's there, people talk about it, and it, it's just kind of impressive. So it was your reactions having now seen the room with Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> it was different. <laughs> like I, I wholeheartedly agree. This movie made no goddamn sense. At all. No, but that's but part of its charm. I think seeing the disaster artist first kind of prepared me for it. Right. Because that's why I was kind of I was kind of angry once you said you had never seen the room when we were on our way to see it and I was like, fuck! I had seen This is gonna color everything. I had seen bits and pieces of it, but never the whole thing. That is thing. not the same. No, but I found it shocking that a lot of people were in the same situation I was. Um they had yes. never seen the room and they had gone to see the disaster artist but because of that they went and watched the room and they have an appreciation for it because it's just like there is a certain appreciation for the room it i love the fact it's very that... very difficult to talk about the room not because it's a complex or a deep movie it's really not but just because if i start talking about it I might as well just show you the movie. Yeah, it's one of those, like, I don't think I can just... This this movie did so many weird things. Like, I definitely understand it was his vision, but I didn't know what I was watching. I felt like I was watching a bad soap opera that turned into softcore porn... <laughs> That turned back into a bad soap opera. Does he that, know where her vagina is? <laughs> that, that turned into soft core porn again. Yeah. And then turned back to bad soap opera. Yeah, there are three really awkward sex scenes in this movie. No, there's more than three. Was there more than three? There well, there are like... three which you are which you see your main protagonist. Yes. Uh, there are there are several that are not seen. But there are three that are definitely seen very explicitly. <laughs> there are plots that go nowhere. Um, yeah, there's shit I don't... Chris R., the drug dealer. I don't have five fucking minutes, Danny! Get my fucking money! 
<laughs> like in that, I didn't understand that scene at all. There's there's the mother's breast cancer subplot. Yeah, just brought up and forgotten. Uh, <laughs> Every time she somebody tells her like it's gonna be okay, mom. I just sit there and I'm like I have cancer. <laughs> like there's that, and then the fucking. Why the fuck does every, like, fucking 15 minutes these motherfuckers gotta go throw football? Uh, <laughs> like, I throw the football at you. <laughs> like, it just makes no goddamn sense. You, you're just the chicken. Let's, chicken, go chicken, throw, chicken, 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 chicken. Let's just go throw football in tuxedo. <laughs> like, and then he trips on nothing and falls down and has to go, and that's the end of it. Yeah, yeah. And then his. That character immediately is recast like three scenes later. Mm -hmm. And they don't even talk about it. Yep. <laughs> it's just like... Honestly, it's something to behold. Um, and then like, you know, you're talking about like the, the girl was like, he hit me. He didn't really hit me. I love him. I don't love him. I love his best friend. His best friend's like, I can't love you. He's my best friend. And then immediately after he says that, he fucks her. Yeah. Like three times. And it's like, if he's your best friend, then stop having sex with her. It's not that hard. She's not <laughs> that attractive. <laughs> like, dude, even... To be like, fair, that does lead to one of the greatest rooftop scenes ever. I did not hit her. It's not true. She's lying. That's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did hey. not. Hi, oh, Mark. hi, Mark. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. You yeah. have to say the entire oh, thing. Hi, Mark. Because it comes completely out of left field. No one knows. You never know who he's talking to. He's just rambling, going up a stairwell to himself. Comes out of the building. Doesn't expect to find anybody. Throws a water bottle down. And then looks over about five inches and goes, Oh, hi, Mark. And it's like, what the fuck was Mark doing up there in the first goddamn place? Who are you talking to? What was with the bottle of water? Why do they all just hang out on this rooftop randomly? <laughs> or in like random back alleys and shit. It's like... I love the fact that this man just had so much goddamn money he could make his own movie, though. Well, it's, it's not just... Neil Breen, dude. Like, it's, it's, not, just, it's not just how... The fact that it's the movie was made. It's how the movie was made. Because there's a lot of really great behind-the-scenes stuff, like the the oh hi Mark scene took 48 takes to do. Yeah, and it's literally just him walking out of the door and saying that sentence that I just said. And they t he had to do it 48 times. Uh, he was very difficult to work on. Uh, with from like they bought the he bought the cameras. Normally, when you do a movie, you rent the cameras, and you return them when you're done with your shoot. Yeah, he bought. A digital and a 35 millimeter <laughs> mounted them both together on the same same rig and shot side by side digital and film because he didn't know how they would look and decided to just splice in between the two. <laughs> and so you end up with this weird hodgepodge of a movie and a lot of people will say it's like a train wreck happening in slow motion. This is literally a train wreck happening in slow motion, but it's also on fire and going off a cliff into an orphanage puppy school. And you just cannot stop watching it. And all the while, clowns are doing an act on board. Yeah. Because you're laughing real hard. That's... And it just... It's the perfect storm of stupidly awful. I I definitely recommend everybody watch it. Like, it's it's one it's, of those. I I can't hate Tommy Wiseau because he gave me something so special that I have never seen something like it before, and I have never seen anything like it since. It is its own unique brand of absolute insanity, and I love it. Uh -huh. I. That's all that really needs to be said about it. Like I, yeah. I completely agree. I should. You, you obviously are super passionate about this. I, 
it's, I it's, think you and James Franco love this movie in the same way. I've watched a lot of really shitty movies in my life. Uh, this is one of the shitty movies that makes me laugh so hard almost every single time I see it for one reason or another. And every time you see it, you get something else out of it. I don't know about that, but you definitely get a laugh out of it. Even if I've seen this movie about seven or eight times <laughs> since I discovered it, uh, almost a decade ago now. Was made in '03. It was made in 2003, and yeah, I want to say I saw it about 2007, 2008. Uh, a buddy of mine introduced me to it, and is like, "Oh, dude, you gotta watch this movie." And I was like, "What are you? What are you talking about?" He's like, "It's fucking weird." I remember... And I was just like, alright. I remember you telling me about this movie, and then you telling me that the Riff Track guys had a hard time with this one, because they didn't know what the fuck to say. Yeah, there are some points where they're just like, I don't, uh, how do I... How do you make this funnier than what it is? <laughs> there's sometimes a joke will not be a joke because what you're seeing is more insanely stupid than what you're talking about. That's all you can really say about it, That's man. all you can really say. If you haven't seen The Room, I strongly recommend you pick up a copy. Jared... I, I say the same thing, either that or uh, you can... We had a hard time finding a copy of this. Yeah, and, uh, the only way you can do it is you have to buy a CD copy, and I had bummed a copy from a friend, and it didn't turn out so good, so I gotta talk to my friend about that. Yeah, um, I ended up finding a digital copy that worked pretty good. You did, I was actually really impressed you were, yeah. but the only way I could, because it's not on Amazon Prime... Uh, it's not on Hulu, it's not on Netflix, it's not it's, on YouTube. It's it's hard to find it, it, it. And I'm talking about legitimate rentals for this, not not downloads, but yeah, it's it's tough to find a to find a good copy. If you want to see it though, there you'll see it. It's, you can find a way to see it. I know movie. I know a girl like who recently bought this off of Amazon for like five bucks. Right. It it's not expensive, but it's it's definitely worth your time. Yep. If you're if you're a connoisseur of bad movies, yes. If you if you're just somebody who's who's like I want to watch a movie about something, don't. No, <laughs> you will not like this movie. You will probably sit there and go, "What the fuck are these fat assholes talking about? This movie was shit." Yeah, pretty much. Yes, I will completely agree with that statement, <laughs> John. But uh, I guess until next <laughs> time, we got one more coming for you guys. And, we're shooting right after this, so... Thanks. Something special for the holiday season. Tis the season, guys. We'll see you next time, everybody. <laughs> he wasn't in that one. Later. <laughs> <laughs>